here's the thing about cats, right? From an outside perspective, to me personally, the idea of a cat didn't appeal to me. But then you start petting that little nigga, they start purring, and they look at you with them eyes, do the slow blink, and you're like, well, now, it's up for me. It's actually up for me. I do what you want me to do. I feed you when you need to be fed. I water you when you need to be watered. I had a cat named Loki. Well, it wasn't really my cat. It was my nephew's cat, but I took care of that cat so much. It basically was my cat. I ain't gonna hold you. Um, but yeah, he passed away, but you know, unexplained cat behavior. Like what you mean unexplained? Cause most of cat behavior doesn't have an explanation. Talk to me, but make sure you talk to me nice. <laughs> Mr. Chief, face the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided that it was shower time. So, girlfriend and I are going to get dressed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Oh, you pay bills or something. <laughs> Is that nigga good? Oh no. <laughs> Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive <laughs> side eye. What is it? <laughs> what? <laughs> No sign language. Oh, oh shit. But I was just chilling. <laughs> Hello. 
Hello. <laughs> Yo, his stomach is wobbling. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nigga said, hell no. <laughs> poor kitty. He looks like an alien. What the? He looks like a slug with a snail oh, on his back. What? Why? <laughs> Did you do that to him? He, he looks like he's not wearing his coat. <laughs> he's got fur pants on. <laughs> what the hell? Is he. Sh Did they shave? You shouldn't be up there, should you? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga smacked you. <laughs> Yo, I can't put the kid really putting paws on you, right? Oh, oh, damn! And then in 2007, he came to my office as a consultant, and I said to myself, "Sorry, I like this gentleman." Now I'm starting to. He proposed to me on my voicemail. My dog. <laughs> He got the water container encircled, bro. What? <laughs> oh my God. There's not a single thought going on between. How did I mess up that one simple sentence, bro? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> yeah, he's lost it. <laughs> right. There we go. Not a thought behind those eyes. What was I trying to say? <laughs> Yo, the way they be moving is so damn fascinating. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh no! One cat's making the other cat back down, I, I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> like off in the distance. <laughs> Bro, cats. Love cats. This is a perfect segue into what we're really going to watch today. Okay. This video was brought to you by Pure Spite. Pure spite. Was that a mountain cat? On a scale from one to ten, my friend. Oh, what the fuck? This video exists for one reason. It's because of an argument I got into with one of my friends, and even though we technically settled it in the end, I'm still tight it even got to that point. And if this dress proved anything. It's that even the most intelligent forms of life in the world, or even the universe, can have the stupidest hills to die on. The dress so is clearly that, red. And because of a certain comment I'm really tired of getting, I decided to take a two for one special on birds, with the one being a stone. And by stone, I of course mean YouTube video. What but first, a word from our spot. There's no sponsors, but can we just agree that this thing is obviously white and gold? Like, y'all really be lying unprovoked. It's no red. Reason. Literally red. Whoa. Get the f and speaking of color causing controversy, no racial, Black Panthers <laughs> aren't real. They don't exist. And what? I very nearly lost a close friend because of it. Melanism's what? a mutation that causes the production of melanin to go into overdrive, leading to basically a real life shadow clone shiny Pokemon. A Black Panther is really just a leopard or jaguar with the same revitiligo Uncle Ruckus got. And because the gene that causes it is dominant in one cat but recessive in the other, most Black Panthers are just jaguars with extra tint. That's how a funeral colorway <laughs> cat can birth a black and yellow remix, and vice versa. So Black Panther isn't really an animal, it's a description. It's a panther that's black. And I wish it ended there, but if it did, this video wouldn't exist. Because this is a Black Panther. 
but this is also a Black Panther. And wouldn't you know, there goes a Blue Panther. What? Since Black Panther just describes a mutation, black ain't the only color on the Panther palette. Lucism is like the sun-bleached cousin of melanism, so even though it sounds like a colonizer response to Wakanda, you can call both of these <laughs> White Panthers. The Maltese Tiger is an alleged variant of the South China variety. It's not for sure that they exist, but if they do, they technically be Blue Panthers. By now, I'm guessing at least one person's commented, what about the Pink Panther? <laughs> about that, Erythrism is the red-headed middle what? child of mutations, and one of the results of <laughs> that... it is the ultra rare Nah, spot. bro, that was supposed to be a joke, bro. That was legit supposed to be a joke. Ain't no way this nigga said, well, actually. <laughs> what about the Pink Panther? About that, Erythrism is the red-headed middle child of mutation. Erythrism? One of the of it is the ultra-rare strawberry-flavored leopard. Or one could say, a pink panther. I can go on, but you see what I'm getting at, right? And at this point, you're probably asking, what even is a panther? The answer, well, the simplest one is that Green. panther is just another word for big cat. It'd be simple if it wasn't for one big pun intended problem. What? Here we have two cats. Cat A is an average of 130 to 140 pounds, stands two to three feet tall at the shoulders, and they max out about, uh, let's say, 220. The average cat B weighs in at a little over 100 pounds on a good day, just over two feet tall, and the biggest ones you'll ever see are pushing 120. But since the world of cats is honestly as defiant as they are, only one of these is a big cat, and it's not cat A. And now you're probably questioning what big cat even means. And I'm so glad you asked, because now we get to meet him. The Big Cat Club is made of the Panthera, or, you know, the Panther genus. There's technically five members, and the first is the Leopard. The Leopard is the pound-for-pound -pound champion of Big Cats. Damn. And what happened if Spider-Man changed careers and paid rent as a hitman? You won't Yo. find five animals more disrespectfully athletic than the Leopard. There's not a single situation where a 360 back no scope the is required to murk him Yo! In the way he's just swinging from trees to trees! Jumping over fences! Oh, nah. What happened if Spider-Man changed careers and paid rent as a hitman? You won't He's... find five animals more disrespectfully athletic than the leopard. There's not a single situation where a 360 backflip no scope is required to murk a monkey. But that's just leopards. They're by far the best climbers of big cats. And to avoid getting food taxed by lions and hyenas, they'll manhandle their prey up into the trees off the muscle. Straight jaw work. No gym, but look at that deadlift. And yeah, that is a rhino. Yeah, that is a giraffe. Leopards can also stalk their prey from the trees and fall out the sky for smoke like Batman about a crypto jaywalker. This oh assault squirrel on steroids is the reason why a sign like this even exists. Not just because an Olympic oh gymnast God, level serial killer could get airdropped to the back of your neck, but also because you can legitimately get life deprived by a leopard's leftovers. Leopards are by far the most versatile big cat, which is why they have the widest range. Just don't let Baboon Gang know, because that beef is anything but rare. Next are snow leopards, and this is going to be the beginning of many, many cat contradictions. Snow leopards? It's ears! Aren't even leopards. What? Genetically, Tai Lung would have been closer to Tigris. Tai that's a shame, Lung! Missing out on the name Cliff Tiger? is a fumble. It's a scientifically proven fact that cats are whores for elevated surfaces. So the mountain tiger lives in God's attic in the Himalayas. So it's a good thing they either have zero fall damage or anime plot armor stronger than vibranium. Yeah, he survived this. What? It also gets cold up there, so the same tail they use for balance can also be used as a DIY scarf. I encourage you to go down the rabbit hole of snow leopards using their tails as security blankets. It'll make you feel as warm as they do. They've been nicknamed Ghost of the Mountains due to how far they've gone to social distance from humanity. But with how dirty we've done their closest cousin, I don't blame them. The actual tiger is like the Chuck Norris of cats because some of the facts about them, you'd swear they were a cryptid if they weren't on camera. Facts like their oh. legs being so built, tigers can stand even after they fully pass tense. Or that the infrasound in their roar can temporarily paralyze prey. How about the fact that they're one of the most vengeful things on the planet, with one tiger crossing off 436 names off the census after she got crossed by one. How about the fact that the reason tigers are orange in the first place is because the animals on their grocery list are completely Helen Keller to the color. Meaning, if you're a deer, this is what the biggest cat in the world looks like. It's also why a tiger's stripes run skin deep. And out of all cats, tigers have by far the highest human body count. And that's mostly because of how close they live to humans. And I don't just mean in India. There's more tigers in America than in the rest of the world combined. This one's in Houston, but we've also screwed them more than any other cat. Most white tigers are literally a product of incest for human interest. Then you got probably the most famous big cat of all, the lion. They're the only ones that weaponize the power of friendship, which is why lions have the most impressive meal plan of any cat. Mm, lions are so cool. An elephant can get packed up by the pride. Not even elephants in general get immunity, but going for the high risk, high reward prey means Damn. lions also get bodied religiously. And not just in Detroit, arguably the biggest danger to a lion is their own ambition. 
But together, probably nothing's more impressive and makes you want to evacuate your bowels more than a pride of lions. And even with Hollywood dubbing over their roar with the tigers, it's cause a lion's roar is designed to be heard and tell anyone within a 5 mile radius that if they plan to f**k around, best make time to find out. And last Wait, they don't roar like- Wow, that's crazy. Anyone within a five mile radius that if they say plan to f around, Ooh. best make time to find out. And lastly, is my personal favorite of the cats, the jaguar. Easily the one punch yeah. man of meat eaters. I like the jaguar a lot. Strongest jaws on a cat, and also their habit of taking Thanos' advice and going for the head. The end game there is a cousin of the crocodile getting its wig busted by an all terrain aquatic vice grip. It takes a lot to make a capybara feel anything that isn't apathy. Jaguars are also OP enough to hit a lick on a sea turtle. I don't know if this makes sense, but jaguars are the tiger sharks of big cats. <laughs> I Their love name jaguars. To he who kills with one <laughs> leap. Because when this leopard on steroids gets active, the census undergoes subtractions. And I don't want to gloss over the fact that they're also the best swimmers of big cats. <laughs> Although the Bengal <laughs> tiger would probably submerged. like to have a word. Jaguars will often chew on yaji vines and get absolutely obliterated. That has nothing to do with this video, but it's by far my favorite fact about them. So those are the five members of the Panther of Jesus, which makes them all right, really? Panthers. Whole time, Jacksonville and Carolina flex the same mascot, which means any one of these cats being that's black crazy. would make it a Black Panther. Yes, even this. Now you might think that's where what? it is. Call me Billy Mays, because wait, there's more. Remember this? Hi, well, Billy Mays. Cat B is a male snow leopard, and Cat A is a mountain lion. The cat world is really just a bunch of rules and cats that break the rules because not only is a cat bigger than a big cat, somehow not a big cat, the cat 99% of people, including Google, think of when they hear panther isn't actually a panther. What the Why? Well, as mentioned, <laughs> cougars don't sit at the big cat lunch table and it has nothing to do with weight class. Most experts agree that the defining trait of a big cat is a modified bone in the throat called the hyoid that gives the cat the ability to roar. So the rule of thumb is if it roars, it's a big cat and if it purrs, it's a little cat. Big quotes on the little. Now I gotta immediately break that rule because snow leopards, the big cat that's already on thin ice for not even being a leopard, also can't roar. What? The f actually, it's gonna get old if I keep doing this, so you know what? I'm just gonna use Soldier Boy. Huh? Instead, they sound like if Lion King showed Simba's awkward teen phase. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so recap, with cats, there's big cats and little cats, or more specifically, panthers and felines. Panthers from the Panthera genus and felines from the Felinae subfamily. You see, now I always thought feline referred to any feline big cat, by this logic, lions, tigers, and the rest of the big cats technically aren't felines. So any cat's either gonna be a big cat pushing pee, pee being panther, or a little cat from family feline. And now I gotta break that rule, cuz this cat isn't either. The clouded leopard isn't a big cat or a little cat. You're probably gonna ask, well, do they roar or purr? No. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Uh what is that? Yeah, what are you Bible doing? Do neither, and they're considered the bridge between big cats and not big but cats. But I was saying, they're also considered nah. a modern day saber tooth. Not literally, but because of having the most disrespectful dental of Damn. any cat relative to size. Speaking of size, I grew up thinking they were way bigger, but that's honestly because the first time I heard of one, it was trying to murk the Rugrats. Also, the clouded leopard isn't an actual leopard, and we can hold the soldier boy because at this point we ain't even surprised. But yeah, other than them, cats are either big cats or not big cats. Which brings us to. The cougar, who, despite being the most associated with the name, isn't even a type of panther. They're actually more related to your pet cat than to an actual lion. The confusion is because mountain lions can be found anywhere from the Yukon to the very tip of South America. Being found in a lot of places means they've gotten a lot of names like puma, cougar. Yeah, I've never heard of catamount, but also panther. A I mean, think about it. They're called mountain lions, but share area codes with jaguars. And also, they don't roar. Instead, they sound like a woman becoming a notch on Ted Bundy's belt. <laughs> Basically, cougars prove that you might be a big cat, but you're not a big cat. This roided up identity crisis might go by many names, but they catamount to a panther. And now that we've addressed that, we can address the second reason I'm making this video. Cheetahs can't roar? You're, you're right. I am weary. Yeah, cheetahs aren't big cats, and not only is it Avengers level conflict in my comments whenever I say otherwise, this was another argument me and my friends got into. 
But cheetahs are in subfamily felinae, which makes them felines, which makes them not big cats. Also, they can't roar. The best they can do is arouse a party of bird watchers. Now you see why cheetahs get religiously bullied. It's basically an overgrown house cat competing with units. I've always said that the cheetah's biggest downfall was investing everything into speed, but honestly, evolving to run away from their problems was the best they could do. And I love cheetahs, but it's clear they took the cut way too far. Like I said, if you can get victimized by vultures, you messed up. In their defense, male cheetahs will form coalitions to tackle life head on. But cheetahs, but cheetahs are, are still the cool most underappreciated single moms in nature. There's a lot more other little cats and some you've never heard of. Like you want to know what's the closest relative of the mountain lion? You'll never guess it. Here's Turtle? an ad while you guess it. It's the Jaguarundi. So the cat named after a jaguar. It's most related to a cat named after a lion, even though neither of them are related to either of those. What? Its name means dark jaguar, even though it looks like a UFO. Unidentified <laughs> feline what otter, is which is actually another name they have. And they do not look happy about it. But nothing has more of an attitude aesthetic than Palace's cat. The cat that looks like the furry epitome of shit ain't funny. But if nature wanted me to take them seriously, it shouldn't have had them built like an ice chilled glacial Garfield. Like snow leopards, they'll also use their tails to stay warm. <laughs> Except with the palace, that means standing on their tails to keep their paws toasty. You're not beating the adorable allegations, buddy. <laughs> now, they're still wild animals, so no, you can't have them as a pet. Or I guess anything can be a pet until it rips Yo, your face what off. Yo, my dog but is chunky. Anything, you can adopt a Siberian forest cat. Cause it's honestly the closest you're gonna get. But yeah, that's the aggro kitty. To be fair, you'd be pissed seven ways to Sunday if you googled ugly eared cat and your face came up. <laughs> now we've got the bobcat and I'm gonna be honest, I could never really tell the difference between them and a lynx. But it turns out this whole time a bobcat is a lynx. Or at least a type of it. The lynx is a cat what? with many faces, with four species of them in- Bro, why is he doing this right now? You're just deconstructing all knowledge I have of cats. Now I'm gonna have nothing, bro. <laughs> but yeah, that's the aggro kitty. To be fair, you'd be pissed seven ways to Sunday if you googled ugly eared cat and your face came up. Now we've got the bobcat, and I'm gonna be honest, I could never really tell the difference between them and a lynx. But it turns out this whole time, a bobcat is a lynx. Or at least a type of it. The lynx is a cat with many faces, with four species of them in circulation. Yeah, I don't know what's happening here either. The cat <laughs> like, the lynx is the most memorable, if for no reason, but the fact that they remind me of that one Proud Family episode. And the only thing goofier than their paws is how they settle disputes. <laughs> Were they just screaming at each other? <laughs> And the lynx of the desert would have to be the Caracal. Caracal. Huh? Uh, Caracal. Caracal? Or you might know him by his stage name, Floppa. Their defining trait is being one of the few creatures alive with an ear mullet. I say few because a river pig stole their entire flow. I can't really tell you for sure, but many believe that they use these ear tufts to catfish birds by pretending to be insects. Others say twitching the tufts is how Caracals talk to each other. Also, they have what's scientifically known as stupid bounce. They're oh my god! Really because every video I see looks like a cat prepared to catch a charge. Turns out hissing is just how they communicate. They can hiss at you and be perfectly happy like only nature sundere can. A close cousin of the caracal is the serval, and for them, all I gotta say is gravity is pretty much an option. Especially since a bunch of their calories come from life retiring birds. Yo, so why? Is pretty much an option. Nah, the since a bunch is of their crazy. Come from life retiring birds <laughs> midair. Pogo Kitty can launch itself 13 feet, and if you're like me with no concept of distance, here's another video. Stupid, right? All right. So we have cats in jungles, cats in deserts, cats in mountains. What about and now cats? Cats, cats in, in air. So, so, so what's next? Like cats in water? That's literally what I was about to say. This what? is a fishing cat, not to be confused with the Fisher cat, which, wouldn't you know, isn't even a cat. Huh? It's pretty obvious where the fishing cat got its name, and it's one of the few cats that will 100% run your fade in water. And now we got the cats that you could put in a pet store and nobody would even blink. And this is the smallest cat of all, with a rusty spotty cat able to sleep comfortably in your hand. And yeah, that's not a kitten, that's a grown man with bills to pay. Not much bigger is the it's black so cute. Foot, aka the deadliest cat on the planet. They have the highest hunting success rate of any cat at 60%, and while hunting, they'll catch a body pretty much every hour on the hour just to stay alive. What? They're the reason I could never be a cameraman. No shot I could see this and be expected to be professional. Ain't no way. Yeah, looking real fierce, buddy. My timbers are shivering. <laughs> Same thing with Joffrey's cat, so a cute. vicious, cold-blooded predator that only weighs at most 10 pounds. And at this point, you're probably wondering just how many cats are in South America. Well, here's three more. The Cod Cod, the Margate, and the Ocelot. I put them together because they look like three stages of the same Pokemon. Right! And here you have the Andean Mountain Cat, which is endangered of being too damn adorable. 
Aww. The Indian Mountain. No, but like, do they live they in Indian? Speaking oh. of which, we got oh. the cats that okay. are so rare. <laughs> oh. There's barely any videos of them I could use. There's the Borneo Bay Cat, or just Bay Cat for short. The Marbled Cat. Another one who could have lived anywhere, but instead chose the foothill forest of the Himalayas. You got the elusive Asian golden cat, and of course, the African golden cat. Can you tell I'm running out of things to say? There's just <laughs> that many cats, and you can see exactly where we got tired of naming them. For example, this is a wild cat. Yeah, that's, that's their that's name. Just a when a naming guy rage quits and you're left with his intern, this is the quality of work you get. <laughs> this wild cat. is a sand cat. It's like a feline fennec fox that runs fades with venomous snakes for fun. Two out of ten name, but at least they live in the sand. This is a jungle cat. Guess where they don't live? I'm not even gonna put this older boy's time. Are y'all trying to piss me off? Yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Not because I named every type of cat. There's like 40 of them. I'm just cutting it now. But yeah, this video was... Kind of just an excuse for me to talk about the cats of the world, so consider it a late Christmas gift. Friendly reminder that I am selling a calendar, link in description if you're interested. But anyway, make sure you drink water, cherish your loved ones. Thank you yeah. for the support 2023, like for real. Shout out to my friends for inspiring and irritating me at the same time. And I'ma see y'all in the next year. Love Casual Geographic, bro. I'm sorry, I, I love... Oh. <laughs> Yo, cats are so weird. <laughs> These niggas are so weird. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> How did he, he gave him a thirty piece. Oh Lord, oh Lord, grab the girl hand. Oh Lord, you are Broken. A term used to describe a character so overpowered that they make the game stop functioning as intended and exploit the game's balance in their favor. Oh my god. Well, if cats aren't the most broken animals on the planet, God must have discontinued first place. I talk a lot about animals that got shafted by evolution. In fact, my most popular video today was about 10 of them. Well, if I ever do a video on nature's favorites, cats would surely be at the very top. Cats are arguably the most successful predators we've ever seen. With so many overpowered abilities, you'd swear it was plot armor. I don't even want to make this intro too long, so here's 10 superpowers your cat has that you may or may not have known. And number one, zero fall damage. You've probably heard that cats always land on their feet, but the real flex is being able to fall from heights that would have any human furnishing a coffin. A 1987 study showed that out of 132 cats that were brought to an emergency vet in New York City after falling out of a high rise, 90% lived and less than 40% required life-saving treatment. It gets even wilder when you realize that cats actually have a better chance of getting airdropped from a building and walking it off the higher the drop was. And it's all because cats understand physics. Yeah. You see, when you're in free fall, you accelerate towards the ground until you reach terminal velocity, where you literally can't fall any faster. When cats reach TV, they splay their legs and kind of just parachute the rest of the way down. And instead of landing on their feet, they break their fall with their chest and abdomen. Obviously, they don't completely tank the hit, but thanks oh to their relatively God. large surface area to weight ratio, they maximize the points of contact that smack the ground and therefore minimize the damage. And since cats apparently have lifelong beef with gravity, cats that reach terminal velocity instinctively know not to tense up, but instead relax and basically turn themselves into a kite on the way down. The thing is, if they don't have time to reach terminal velocity, they end up getting hurt way worse. So like in a weird twist, cats that fall from two to seven stories actually end up more down bad than the ones that touch earth from 10 stories up. In fact, cats have about a 95% chance of falling from 10 stories and living. Meanwhile, the average human has a 95% chance of getting outlined with chalk. Oh, and don't think the cutoff's 10 stories either. One cat named Sabrina took a 32-story express trip to the ground and walked away with only a punctured lung and a chipped tooth. Not to mention she was released and sent home two days later. Being impervious to fall damage is how snow leopards can not only make a living in the Himalayas, but can legit fall clear off a cliff and the only injury they take is to their pride. Speaking of plot armor, did you know cats are actually built to predict the weather? You see, cat hair attracts static electricity, so they can pick up on the buildup of electrical charge that often comes before a really bad storm. And the cat's inner ears are sensitive to sudden drops in atmospheric pressure, which announce the arrival of a cloud assault. Will they tell us this so information? Why our ears do the most and pop on a plane, but it's just that cat ears are that much more sensitive. And they can even smell rain and lightning coming. It's so OP that sailors used to use cats aboard ships as a four-legged forecast. For forecast. No, no, yeah, forecast. <laughs> Apparently a cat with the zoomies means you could expect strong winds. A cat that sneezed was warning you of heavy rain. Oh, and apparently shit. if one licked their fur against a grain mid-sail, then you better make like God's golfing because it's finna hail. Now, to be fair, a month surrounded by nothing but sea and sea men gives you a lot of time to just make stuff up. I mean, just how many sea monster stories was just a whale freeing his willy? 
But there might be some truth to the cat thing. Cats will often spend extra time what? licking themselves before a bad storm since having damn fur helps with the static thing I told you about. So basically, if cats could talk, we'd see a lot of meteorologists on unemployment. And speaking of no job, cats really managed to finesse their way into living in nearly 50 million homes in America rent free. And one of the biggest reasons is because cats are the best manipulators nature has to offer. And if you think they aren't, no, they are. probably a mark and you don't even know it. According to researchers <laughs> at the fat. University of Sussex, many cats will exploit their owners with a soliciting purr. It's more high frequency, triggers a sense of urgency in humans, and even someone resembles the cry of an infant, and we just have to assume that's intentional. And in experiments, not only did humans have a faster response time when hearing that purr compared to a normal one, it even affected people that never owned cats. This distress purr likely triggers a deep, innate nurturing response in humans, meaning you're literally hardwired to answer to it no matter what you were doing. Wow! So apparently cats understand psychology too. That's not even really a joke because adult cats almost never meow to each other, but kittens do it with their mothers for food and warmth, and we have to assume they just figured out it works on humans too. And it's not just pet cats with this talent. Tigers have been known to imitate the sounds of their prey to lull them into a false sense of security. Tigers have reportedly mimicked sandbar deer and black bears. Bro, just, just listen to this. Are you mooing because you want to be one with the cows? And it's not just tigers. The South American Margay will verbally cosplay as a baby monkey just to murk its parents like a Disney movie. And clearly the manipulation tactics were passed down. In fact, cats are so good at working people that they'd actually be great politicians. Yo, when do we have a cat as president? This is what my parents mean by the 90s was crazy. <laughs> this is what y'all was doing? Electing animals as president? <laughs> I wish we could do that. I would, what animal would be the best president? Honestly, a cat? Conniving, sneaky, cunning, food motivated. <laughs> Is our president being food motivated a good? Nah, that's a, that's a really bad thing. Cause then we could get the president to do anything with a little bit of, with a little bit of salmon. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really moving right now. The South American Margay will verbally cosplay as a baby monkey. Is it really from South like America? And clearly the manipulation tactics were passed down. In fact, cats are so good at working people that they'd actually be great politicians. Which is probably how Mayor Stubbs of Tolkien, Alaska stayed in office for 20 years, even surviving assassination attempts by dogs, BB guns, and a deep fryer. But there's another special ability cats have, and it could arguably be the most overpowered of all. Deep fryer? Pretty privilege. It's how dolphins got flipper, orcas got free willy. Meanwhile, the best movie deal shark management could get them was being typecast as Jaws. You see, there's this thing called baby schema. It basically means that humans have an intrinsic bias towards a certain set of facial features in people and animals to the point where it just makes us want to protect them. And with their big head, wide eyes, and round forehead, and animals. What? By the way, character is canonically an ex-husband to 12 mostly dead wives with a foot fetish. <laughs> Wait, really? What character is this? And with their big head, wide eyes, and round forehead, cats? literally remind us of babies and even yeah. though it's a buff from nature cats will 100 percent play into this by figuring out what combination of ear wiggling whisker pointing and eye narrowing gets the best response from people now add the fact that slow blinking with your cat can trigger oxytocin in both of you the literal hormone that bonds a mother to her child and you can see how cats were basically engineered to be irresistible it's pretty privileged on every steroid possible and it's wild because if any other animal had a reputation for cold indifference and global genocide it'd be cause of pause but because it's cats we just let it slide. Cat cuteness virtually has us in a chokehold, and I said virtual for a reason. It's said that 50% of all internet traffic is driven by cat content. That's 50% of all the stuff on the internet. Damn! I want you to think about that during this ad. Matter of fact, and I'm willing to put money on it, for some of y'all, this ad's about to be cat related. Wait, I didn't get an ad, bro. How did you know I was about to, like, how did you know I was gonna get an ad? Oh, you're back. Oh, by the way, was it? Was it cat related? It I'm kind of. Curious. But the thing that almost always gets forgotten is that cats give back as much as they take, which True. leads to their next flex, healing powers. Whoa. And not just for them. Science says having a cat living under your roof easily extends your subscription to life. Mm -hmm. Studies show that cat owners are 40% less likely to suffer a heart attack and have a 30% less chance of getting clapped by cardiovascular complications. And since cardiovascular disease is one of the leading causes of preventable death today, cats are like a real life one-up. 
Not to mention kids that grew up around cats have less of a chance of getting folded by allergies, especially if the exposure started in early infancy or even while they're still in the womb waiting room. And then there's the fact that just petting a cat can nerf stress levels and blood pressure. But if you really want to get literal about it, cats purr at a frequency that's said to improve bone density, repair tendons, and promote healing. I never really fully understood it, but apparently cats purr at a frequency that transmits vibrations throughout the body, vibrations that help increase blood flow to the affected area, thereby bringing more nutrients. It's also believed- Whoa, whoa, vibrations? So basically what you're saying is, the moment I learn news of me having a kid, I should already have a cat or I need to get a cat so that my kid's bone density can be further enhanced by the powers of a cat. Say that. If I get multiple cats that are purring multiple times throughout the day on my pregnant wife's belly, yo, my kid's bone density, top tier. <laughs> Top tier bone density. I need my kid to have the bones of uranium, titanium. What's in what's in werewolf's body? I mean, uh, Wolverine's body. Loganium? No. Silveranium? Adamantium. I need my kid's bones to be similar to adamantium. That statement has ups and downs. <laughs> really fully understood it, but apparently cats purr at a frequency that transmits vibrations throughout the body, vibrations that help increase blood flow to the affected area, thereby bringing more nutrients. It's also believed that those same vibrations can help with soft tissue injuries like sprains and strains. I know I said they live rent free, but considering all they do to carry our health, Again, I, I feel like we could let it slide. It's yeah. not just a buff to your health either. I vividly remember seeing a bunch of surveys that said that women on dating sites actually find men with cats more attractive. Something about seeming more nurturing or emotionally intelligent. I love cats! On an unrelated note, I want y'all to meet my editor and content manager, Aslan. Oh my god! Dude, your cat is adorable as shit! <laughs> I tried to find the articles online, but apparently there was a switch up and now women find cat owners less attractive. So on another unrelated note, yeah, he isn't mine. I'm actually just cat sitting. <laughs> wait, <close>. wait, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 sorry. I was like distracted by the cat. They, women don't find cat dudes attractive. Good boy. I tried to find the articles online, but apparently there was a switch up and now women find cat owners less attractive. <laughs> so on another unrelated note, yeah, he isn't mine. I'm actually just cat sitting for a friend. So uh, nah, I love Yeah, but I'll, anyway, cat plot armor is so it. strong that it might just be able to save you from cancer. We've all heard the stories of feline physicians detecting it in people before anyone else could. Cats have a sense of smell about 14 times stronger than humans, with their 200 million odor receptors to our pitiful, almost embarrassing five. Five million. Oh, I was about to say f five, just five, like one, two, three, four, five. Tumors produce volatile organic compounds, and these VOCs leave the body through sweat and breath. And there's a lot of respected researchers out there that will die on the hill that cats can sniff it out the same way dogs can. In 2018, rescue cat Mia climbed on owner Michelle Pearson's chest and wouldn't get off for anything, sniffing and pawing at, you know, the right one, while also meowing and looking at her, as, as cats do. It wasn't until her husband checked for himself that he felt the telltale lump, and that's how the cat that was rescued from certain death ended up returning to favor and saving her owner from stage two breast cancer. Damn. That's not even much of a reach, considering there's also stories of cats warning their diabetic owners of their potentially fatally low blood sugar. Either that, or cats can see the future and they'll choose to keep you in theirs if they like you enough. And even that's low-key valid, considering superpower number seven is that cats have ultra instinct. Those whiskers can detect sudden changes in air currents to figure out the size, shape, and speed of nearby objects. It's like a whole radar system growing out of their face, and it's how a blindfolded cat is still hell on earth for any mouse in the area. Bro, I still don't think you're understanding just how much of a cheat whiskers are. Cats can even use whiskers, whiskers can to do out that? direction their prey is trying to dodge it in right before they pounce, allowing them to cut off any possible escape routes. Now to us, it's interesting- Oh, I didn't know that! That's actually really- How does the whiskers- how does it do that? Yo, cats are so cool. <laughs> oh my God, I did not know they could do that. Like some of the other stuff I low-key kind of knew, but that cat was blind and it snatched up whatever that owner was holding easily. And it's how a blindfolded cat is still hell on earth for any mouse in the area. Bro, I still don't think you're understanding just how much of a cheat whiskers are. Cats can even use their whiskers to figure out what direction their prey is trying to dodge it in right before they pounce, allowing them to cut off any possible escape routes. Now to us, it's interesting and pretty cool, but to a mouse trying to make it home to his family, <laughs> that's gotta be some bullshit. And cats don't just have them on their face, they have whiskers all over. And you can't even play dead with the cats since they have carpal whiskers that allow them to tell if their prey is playing or, you know, actually Seriously? Cats. Honestly, this might be the most broken ability Yo, It's basically impossible so to catch up. a cat slipping. They don't have to hear you, they don't even have to smell you. All it takes-
F. It's basically impossible. Ain't no way this nigga came back. Oh my God. Nah, cats are actually broken. I'm not gonna hold you. Damn. Some bullshit. And cats don't just have them on their face. They have whiskers all over. And you can't even play dead with the cats since they have carpal whiskers that allow them to tell if their prey is playing or, you know, actually past tense. And honestly, this might be the most broken ability cats have. It's basically impossible to catch a cat slipping. They don't have to hear you. They don't even have to smell you. All it takes is a smallest change in air currents to dry snitch on you. But as predators, cats are the ones that do the sneaking, which only makes their next ability even more of a jihad for their prey. Superpower Damn. number eight. Cats are athletic Yo. freaks of nature. Oh God, they are. Cats are the most athletic group of animals on earth, and I'm gonna stand on that. Oh. There might not be a single event at the Olympics that one of the 40 flavors of feline can flex on us in. You want speed? Cheetahs can go zero to 60 in three seconds and can peak out at over 70 miles per hour. A cheetah on a Sunday morning jog can still get pulled over on the turnpike, ain't that crazy? Wanna see some long jumping? Cougars can clear 45 feet horizontally on an off day. You wanna see a cat get high minus the catnip? The serval jumps so high that their meal prep literally involves pimp slapping birds right out of the air. And for powerlifting, here we have a literal deadlift by a leopard using only its teeth. Yes, that is a rhino. Yes, that is a giraffe. And speaking of leopards, they're also gymnasts on steroids that turn trees into jungle gyms. And if you think you're safe from the smoke and Damn. water, keep in mind that the caiman is part of one of the most successful group of predators in history. And all it took was an aquatic equalizer in the form of a cat to wreck their entire game plan. Not to mention jaguars have been seen swimming clear across the Panama Canal. Yeah, that one. Also, they have a hydraulic press for a jaw. God help you if you get caught in it. And all I need to say about tigers is that this is an Indian gar, and even this walking Red Bull logo can get choked out by a 500 pound striped giggle Garfield. Damn! And I don't even need to say anything about lions. Those triceps speak for themselves. Damn! Cats are nature's population <laughs> control, and there isn't anywhere on earth outside of the devil's Nah, the way that, that nigga is- some kind of cat running it. Even the travel size ones- Nah, the way that nigga camouflage, bro, he is up to no good. <laughs> speak for themselves. Cats are nature's population control, and there isn't anywhere on earth outside of the devil's ice rink that doesn't have some kind of cat running it. Even the travel size ones are a menace. The deadliest cat in the world is the African black-footed cat, and because of their metabolism, not only can they catch up to 15 bodies a night, they also have a hunting success rate of 60%. Not even lions, tigers, and leopards can touch that. There's a reason why domestic cats put billions of animals on shirts a year. And sometimes they turn entire species into history lessons. And unlike their wild cousins, a lot of times with domestic cats, they do it just for fun. Yeah, right. you think it's cute, but it's bloodlust. And if you're a mouse and op with whiskers, it's like Thanos. They do be inevitable, especially when you factor <laughs> superpower number nine. Cats can teleport. I'm dead serious. No. Cats do this thing where they just spawn wherever the plot what the most. Oh, you know, that scared me. Hunters, cats can cover <laughs> insane amounts of distance in times that really make no sense. Take mountain lions, for example. Young male cougars will often travel hundreds of miles away from their mother's territory to find their own. In 2009, a tagged cougar took a walk that took him from Black Hills, South Dakota, all the way to Greenwich, Connecticut. Basically, he hiked from Mount Rushmore to 30 miles from Manhattan. And it's not just cougars that go cross country. A tiger named T1 managed to walk 800 miles across India in only a few months, fueled by nothing but the power of horny. And of course, there's a story of El Jefe, a jaguar that randomly showed up in Arizona just outside Tucson. I could really keep going. From June 2017 to July 2018, a young lynx trekked from a wildlife refuge in Alaska all the way into the heart of the Yukon. A trip that totaled 2,174 miles. His name was Hobo, by the way. Can't even make that up. But the best story of teleporting cats was Clementine Jones. She was a cat Clem in New York whose family left her behind because they were moving and they figured the trip would be too hard on a pregnant cat. Oh, little did they know. Clementine spent a couple of months with her kittens and then one day just headed out and popped up at her old family's home 1,600 miles away in Denver. And it's not even like the family got tricked by a dupe. Clementine was born with an extra toe and had a burn mark on her shoulder. There was no mistaking her. There's only one cat power that's arguably more impressive, and you saw it coming as soon as you clicked on this video. Superpower number 10, mind control. And it's all because of a little parasite called, you know the name, Toxoplasma Gandhi. I it do not know the name. What? Enters a cat because what are you talking about? They reproduce in their bowels and their eggs don't get past until the cat has a movement, usually in a litter box. Whoa! Is this real? Literally only reproduce in their bowels and their eggs don't get past until the cat has a movement, usually in a litter box. Now here's the problem. The Toxoplasma Gandhi needs to find a way back into the cat in order to hit restart on its life cycle. And the best way to do that is by setting up shop inside one of the animals on its grocery list. The only issue is no mouse that values its life is going anywhere near a death sentence with toe beans to make it happen. So the parasite, which by the way basically uses the mouse as a layover, they begin to rewire its brain in order to remove the fear of cats. And I don't even know how, but infected mice can even start fiending for cat pee. 
With more irrational confidence than the father of four in an Instagram model's comments, it's easier for the mouse to get body bagged by its number one op, thus repeating this vicious mouse murking cycle. And of course, we now believe that when this same parasite invades us, they do the same thing they would to a mouse. Which is why popular opinion is that the Toxoplasma parasite causes an unreasonable attraction to cats. And it's possible that this factory reset of our personality is due to the parasite making enzymes that control dopamine. And it's not just humans that can get infected. Turns out afflicted hyena cubs end up bolder in the face of lions, which is a great way for them to get invited to a meet and greet with Mufasa. Damn. It's not 100% proven that the parasite's responsible for all the cat people in the world, but hear me out. There's proof that this parasite was present in ancient Egyptian mummies. And these were the people that straight up worshiped them. Not to mention up to a third of all Anubis. people alive right now have it, and most have no idea. And that's why I say cats have the wildest plot armor I've ever seen. Cause real talk, only cats could spin a parasitic infection into a way of living rent free. Trust me, I would know. Isn't that right, Maple? And that's why cats are the most broken animals in nature. With, with cats being nature's cutest form of population control, I talk about them a lot in my book. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> okay. With cats being nature's cutest form of population control, I talk about them a lot in my book, 100 Animals That Can Redacted Kill You. Link in the description if you want to see for yourself. But make sure you drink water, hug your mother, hug a cat. It might just save your life. And if he allows it, I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Aw, you're such a good boy. You're such a, you're such a good boy. Okay, okay. You can go now. Uh, there you go. Hey, bro. Oh, He's a real I nigga. Love that guy. Hey, he loves you too. I, I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. They be mind controlling us. That's like so freaking cool. Why do they have so many abilities? Like, how come? Okay, what, what as a human? You spec into what abilities? Like, what do you, you we can run really long. We have intelligence. We can use weapons. Is it because having the abilities of a cat would make us like really overpowered? Or being able to jump 13 feet in the air would be kind of crazy. <laughs> I'd rather be kind of dumb and be able to jump 20 feet in the air. Oh, but like what happens when I like land? <laughs> if I was kind of dumb, I wouldn't have considered that thought process. I love being human, bro. <laughs> I want to be a I want to be a T-Rex, but I don't want short arms. I want to be a T-Rex with long arms and I want wings. So I want to be a flying T-Rex. And maybe you could breathe fire. That's Loki a dragon, ain't it? It's a hot dog. Are these not <laughs> Wait a second. Hold on. I'm confused. Are these not snacks for the line? The line is like was good, guys. Sometimes all it takes is one picture going viral to completely shatter everything we thought we knew about the world. Right. This is one of those pictures. So the story goes, a mother tiger in California tragically lost her cubs to premature labor and the loss left her so depressed that she would barely move and wouldn't eat at all. Worried for her well-being, zookeepers took five baby pigs, wrapped them in tiger skin, and like only a true mother would, the tiger adopted them all. She would nurse them, eat and sleep with them, and refuse to let them out of her sight. It was your typical Disney feel-good story that warmed the hearts of anyone who saw it. Now, here's where you have a choice. I can let you keep believing that story and just leave you with the happy ending. No! In which case, you should probably click off this video, drink water. No! <laughs> Ain't gonna lie, nature is nature. <laughs> you gotta respect that. Bro, it's like bacon in front of her, bro. Like, what did you think was gonna happen? But no, not the baby tigers that are really pigs. Water, hug your mother, all that good stuff we'll see in the next one. For the rest of y'all going red pill, just remember, you chose this. So this like picture's purple. 100 I don't want real. red pill. No Photoshop, no filter, Th this happened. The right. story I just told you behind it was completely made up. First of all, this wasn't even taken in California. It was 8,000 miles away in one of the biggest tiger hubs in the world, the Sriracha Zoo in Pattaya, Thailand. This is a wholesome story about a tiger taking the role of swine surrogate. It's actually one of the most unhinged experiments you've never heard of. 
You see, this zoo wanted to know if they could successfully rewire the nature of a tiger, and they did that by having one be raised by a pig. Yeah, they basically decided to play God with a giga-sized Garfield. I mean, this was back in 2004, but it was also 11 years after Jurassic Park. Someone should have known better. So the Sriracha Zoo had a mother pig raise a litter of tiger cubs. The tiger in the viral picture was two-year-old Saimai, and she was actually brought up and nursed by a pig until she was four months old. The whole point was to see if being raised by a pork product could make an apex predator less of a life risk and more docile. And from the pictures and videos, the pig's it going seemed at like it. it worked. Until it didn't. It would take years, but eventually several claims would come out. You know, claims of animal mistreatment, exploitation, and straight up a Basically, Damn. it ended up being one of those places guys would go to to take a selfie with a tiger to put on Tinder. And I genuinely hope that was the only cat any of y'all ever saw. The zoo also had a bunch of hands and stuff you could do with tigers, which is probably the biggest red flag a zoo can have. If the yeah. same strike delete button that can solo a walking bicep also sits still for a stranger's selfie, start looking left, because sh ain't right. So to make a long story short, if Tiger King would have came out in 2004, Joe Exotic would have been Bangkoking in Thailand. There was even an incident where 23 <laughs> tigers flatlined a bird flu after being fed raw contaminated chicken. And then there's also the fact that one of the zoo owners, Samay Tham Siripong, was charged with breeding tigers without a license. It took a worldwide pandemic to do it, but eventually the zoo closed its doors July 13th, 2021. What, what happened to the tigers? To and her foster pigs? Well, 16 years after this picture was taken, another video would go viral. Only this time, it was a now 19-year-old Saimai pouncing on one of the piglets and not in a cute playing type of way. The only thing stopping Wilbur from becoming the end of Charlotte's Web was a zookeeper distracting the tiger before a bunch of small children found out where bacon comes from. That video wasn't exactly the nail in the coffin, it was more like the shovel that started the digging. What that video also proved is that you can't change nature, no matter how many sequels this franchise gets. <laughs> like take this video for example, where this polar bear went viral for seemingly petting a husky in Canada. The biggest meat eater in the world on legs and even he can't help himself adorable right the part that didn't go viral was immediately after when the polar bear proceeded to send the dog to dog backwards by attacking and eating it all while the dog was chained up and couldn't even run hey remember you chose the red pill the point is there are rules in nature and every time we cosplay as creator and break them means one less dog one confused tiger and a bunch of pigs that are gonna have one hell of an identity crisis but sometimes nature breaks rules all on its own and all it leaves us with or questions. Kamunyak was a lioness living in the Samburu Reserve in Kenya who would become Sa famous Samburu? in 2002 for violating the number one rule of being a lion. What? The lioness was seen with a young, as in not older than a week old, oryx calf. She didn't turn the calf into calories, instead she acted as his bodyguard following it around everywhere and even defending it from other animals attempting to meal prep it. The lioness had adopted something that any other day would have just been protein. And this time humans had nothing to do with it. Tourists would flock in from all over to witness this disrespect to the natural order and even after seeing it with their own eyes they still didn't believe it. Kamunyak only confused rangers the more they watched her. At one point she squared up with a group of cheetahs for looking at the oryx calf the wrong way. She would literally starve herself for the calf's sake. She couldn't go out and hunt for herself since the little oryx calf would just wander around aimlessly instead of staying hidden in one place the way an actual a line cup would. So for the more than two weeks these two were together, she just didn't eat. I can only imagine what the other lines thought. This was basically like a man walking into an orphanage and then leaving with a Big Mac and a stroller. Why was it doing Spongebob that? An entire relationship arc with something he grills for a living. It's just one of those <laughs> things like Mandy smiling or EDP foster momming a cupcake and not eating it. It just breaks the natural order. One day, Kamunyak and her little calf went to get water and in the short amount of time her back was turned, a male lion appeared and gave her a live demonstration of what a lion actually is. So yeah, no more baby. And the lioness that had nearly starved herself to death for it acted like any mother would after losing a cub of her own and the rangers watching it all go down had no way of explaining it now the baby oryx calf being chill with its number one op in the first place actually isn't that crazy there's a good chance it was probably just too young to even know what fear was like when a baby wildebeest was filmed playing with a hyena cub as if his family reunion wouldn't dissect and eat him alive that is until its mother pulled up and bro remembered who he was and dipped but a predator playing parent to prey is where rules get broken it's something you'd expect from disney and like in disney it probably started from a family member getting murked Kamunyak mm. apparently had cubs of her own, and a violent dispute in the pride meant she lost it, likely to a new rival male. And with as young as she was, this was likely her first litter, and after losing them so brutally and hormones still running high, she probably didn't know what else to do. So it's possible that the calf imprinting on the lioness caused a motherly instinct to override to turn you into take out and smoke you like a Marlboro instinct. At least that's just my guess, because no one thought to ask the lioness what was going through her head. And this right. might have been her first time, but this wouldn't be her only. This would happen. That is such a good point, bro. Fuck them ass. Just like, well, why don't we ask her, nigga? That's a whole lion, bro. We ask her, hey, um, so sorry to bother you, uh, Miss Lion. I know you've been through a lot. But you know that was that was basically food for you. Why why didn't you just eat it? <laughs> yeah, we're all dead now. 
because no one thought to ask the line Nestle was going through her head. And this might have been her first time, but this wouldn't be her only. This would happen not once, not twice, not even a hat trick, but Kamunyak the lioness would adopt six different Oryx caps. What? Also, I feel like I should just mention, at this point, she was going out of her way to follow her just so she could steal any unattended minors. And it wasn't like she just didn't realize that these weren't lions, because oftentimes she would let the newborn calf nurse from its actual mother before running her off. And in case you're curious about what happened to the rest of her foster kids, the second one was intercepted by park rangers and taken to an animal orphanage in Nairobi. The third calf actually returned to its mother, and during a nursing session, peaced out with the rest of its herd, even with Kamunyak chasing after them to get her baby back. Same thing happened with the fourth, with the mother Oryx managing to reunite with her baby. And I can only imagine this made her learn her lesson in the worst way possible, because she didn't let the fifth calf return to its mother, and the end game was the calf going into a permacoma due to starvation, which Kamunyak would respond to by eating the sole evacuated body. And adoption number six went like three and four, with the kidnapped calf hightailing it back to his bio mom. And remember, she would go on a hunger strike for the entire time she was looking after each one. And I'd love to tell you that this story ends with Kamunyak finally getting an actual family of her own, except she was last sighted in 2004 and no one's been able to find her since. So if this was a movie, it'd be Lion King's troubled teenage cousin. And it's not the only time this kind of thing would happen. In 2015, a film crew was focused on a herd of wildebeest along with one lioness stalking them from the grasses. Fun fact, lions will often spawn wipe their prey by attacking the ones that have just given birth. So when the lioness made her move and the mother wildebeest dipped, it looked like it was about to be a revolving door for the baby right back to the gulag. Except that's not what happened. The apex predator hesitated on what would have probably been her easiest meal in months. And the literal minutes old wildebeest started nuzzling up to the huge cat, as if the same line that wasn't finna take him off this world was the one that brought him in. And I don't know if it was that famous new baby smell, or if the fetus not showing any fear factory reset the lion's software, but not only did she spare him, after a little while she left, and the still wet from the womb wildebeest calf reunited with its mother. And unlike with Kamunyak, this lioness was 100% trying to catch a body, but something made her stop and I have no idea why. At least with a calf, it's probably too young to know to run away and just saw the lion as a warm body. But an animal deciding to pretty much pardon something it's eaten hundreds of in its life is something science can't 100% explain. That's so Before interesting. Before y'all say she must have felt bad for the baby, there's literally videos on YouTube of lions life-depriving pregnant animals, pulling the fetus out and eating both alive. Or I guess technically only one of them's alive. I guess there is a chance the lioness was trying to use the okay. baby's bait to murk its bigger, more fulfilling mother. And some articles think it's their version of playing with their food, like a cat and mouse kind of thing. But like, that still doesn't explain how a cat that can eat 15 pounds of meat a day would lose interest in free calories that fast. And the stories just keep coming. In fact, just last year- Yo, free calories is crazy. <laughs> Like he's the way he describes it is so clinical and factual. It's like, I mean, yeah, you you not wrong, but Jesus. <laughs> INS was trying to use the baby as bait to murk its bigger, more fulfilling mother. And some articles think it's their version of playing with their food, like a cat and mouse kind of thing. But like that still doesn't explain how a cat that can eat 15 pounds of meat a day would lose interest in free calories that right. fast. And the stories just keep coming. In fact, just last year, a lioness was caught on camera looking like it was escorting a baby wildebeest calf back to its herd with the little guy following him the way he would with his bio mom. So I don't know, maybe when a lioness loses her cubs, the motherly instinct is so strong she'll project it on anything. Or maybe lions are realizing that chasing and catching their groceries is too much work and now they're trying the factory farming strat. But a lion <laughs> treating food like family wasn't the only time a major rule of cat culture was broken. Like I want you to take a good look at this picture. This might look like nothing special, but let me give you some background. A lion's main goal in life is to pass down his genes as much as possible to keep his bloodline alive. The catch is whenever a rival male or males take over a pride, the first thing they do is commit severely late term abortions on any offspring that aren't theirs. Scar actively tried to put Simba on a t-shirt was scientifically accurate, although if it was 100% he would have wiped out Nala too. <laughs> But yeah, long story short, a new stepfather usually means caskets for any remaining cubs. Which is exactly what this male did. After he and another male took over a pride, he proceeded to give every cub a welcoming gift of a pair of wings and a halo. Every cub, except for that one. That's not his kid, and he knows it. Not only was he seen sparing op DNA, he was even photographed playing with the cub. Also, a moment of silence for his actual dad. Man's Damn. just nearly lost his entire gene pool and got all his women snatched from him just to have his own chromosomes cuddling with the lion that did it. And I just know bro watching from the gulag like, ain't no 
away. <laughs> now, new males don't always go Casey Anthony on the children. Sometimes lionesses are able to fend off the newcomers, and sometimes the lions don't even bother with cubs that are nine months or older, i.e. cubs past the nursing phase. But like, that's the thing. That cub is definitely young enough to get turned into a rug. And being cute with someone else's kid goes against basically everything we thought we knew about them. And it's not just lions defying nature. Male tigers usually want no parts in raising children. They might protect them, but that's it. Especially since tigers are solitary animals that have enough of a full-time job looking after themselves. But there was at least one tiger that broke this rule, and his name was P243. You see, our boy P243 had a mate, and that was P213-32. I, I didn't come up with the names. The right. two were together for over two years, and 243 was never seen with another tigress because we love a faithful king. But his mate suddenly died, and it clearly had an effect on him. He spent hours sitting at the place his mate of many years passed, and when the tigress was cremated, P243 was on a scene less than an hour later. She didn't just leave him behind, but also four cubs. Normally, losing a mother that young means the orphans would soon get to go see her, but P243 did what we've rarely seen a male tiger, or really any male big cat for that matter, do. He stepped up. After that, P243 would often make kills, but leave the food behind for the four cubs who were too young to hunt for themselves. One time, the father caught a full-grown cow and left it behind without taking any for himself. And whenever the forest department would see the four cubs, the father would never be too far away. Obviously, there isn't a mystery as to why he did this. I mean, they were his kids. But it also managed to break what we thought were the rules of being a male tiger. Because as dark and messed up as it sounds, it would actually make more sense to just cut losses and try again with another female. Instead of taking the time to raise kids that might not make it in the end when you really could just make more. Especially since 10 days after his mate died, trackers found him near another female. But the relationship didn't go anywhere and the two weren't seen together again. Meanwhile, 243 continued looking after his cubs. Yo, what there is were even this? a few reports that the time was seen together again. Meanwhile, like, did he get hit right here or something, bro? 243 continued looking after his cubs. There were even a few reports that the tiger had started teaching his cubs how to hunt. Now, there is no way of knowing for sure the cubs make it after all that, but according to the latest update I could find, all four cubs are still alive, healthy, and active. Which would be mm. great numbers even if they had a mother, but going four for four even after getting bambied, well, that's not supposed to happen. At this point, every breath they take is overachieving, and you can thank Mr. 243 for that. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Be sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram for more consistent uploads in between videos. And if you'd like to support this channel beyond subscribing, my Patreon's also gonna be in the description. But as always, it's only if you have like extra money you're not gonna miss. Don't give anything you don't need. You watching this video all the way through and allowing me to do this for a- Hey, brah. You a real nigga. I fucks with, nah, CG is a real nigga. I like that a lot of you, bro. Thank you. I'm so happy you said that, bro. I say that to all my Patreon investors too. Tribe investors. Don't be giving me money that you need, bro. I make money off of YouTube just fine. It's hard. I'm not making a lot. I will. I don't want y'all to spend unnecessary money on me. For a living is already much appreciated. All in all, make sure you drink water, hug your mother, tell your father you appreciate him. If you ever see something like this on Tinder, beg his pardon, hit him with the left like Harden, and I'll oh see y'all in the next one. Is he teaching them to roar? <laughs> That's so cute. Hello, am I speaking to Lucas? Uh, no, this is Jeremy. Oh, hi, Jeremy. Are, are you a homeowner by any chance? Uh, no, I live in an RV. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Okay, no worries, sir. No, no bother. Right, right. Hey, 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 <laughs> Why did he say he's sorry? Hey, whoever that was, you a dickhead. What, bro? The folks who live in RVs, there's nothing wrong with that. RVs are fire, bro. But I uh, said, I'm so sorry. What the hell? <laughs> Cats, fascinating. Like I said at the beginning of this, cats are some of the most fascinating creatures. They sneak up on you and how fascinated they are. Cause at first you're just like, nah, cats are like entitled. They give me arrogant vibes, but it's like, damn, they're so cool. <laughs> and they know it. That's the thing. Cats are so cool and they know it, bro. <laughs> the fact that that tiger uh, dad cat was able to save four cubs and like they were able to grow into actual tigers, bro. That's like a miracle, right? <laughs> His innate nature dictates that he wouldn't even be in this situation. Yet here he is doing better than some of you niggas out here.
ain't that a shame? I won't ever let that be me. I'm just keeping it honest. I don't want to ever talk too much shit about niggas. Niggas is having rough out here. But you okay with being a deadbeat dad? Oh, I'm gonna talk shit about you. Okay, I'm not gonna take up much more of your time. Enough of me. No, seriously, enough for me. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. This is very, very fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. This this just made me so much more interested in cats. It's been your boy, Tribe Louie. And in case I don't see you, in case I don't see you, good day, good afternoon, good evening, good night, child. Good night. Yeah, huh, it's the end. Huh. Leave a like and share it to your friends and your kin. Huh. When I post a video, I'm gonna need y'all to attend. Huh. Thank you for the view, huh, but I ain't done with you. In 2023, I'm about to be Jordan with the flu. Huh. Yeah, join a tribe. Huh. Yeah, join a tribe. I'm gonna need y'all to subscribe.